So it's been a minute since I did a video. We got a couple more ducks and our meat chickens will be here in a little over a week. So I wanted to give you guys an update on the chickens, the ducks, and the garden. I already started harvesting some lettuce because that is blowing up. So let me turn the camera around and show you the garden first. Okay, so it doesn't seem like much on camera, but I started with just a few plant starts that I started indoors. So this one, that one, this one right here, that one over there, and that one on the end were all started indoors. And then all of my kale was started indoors as well. Then I just came out here and heavily seeded some salad lettuce. You can see some's just growing out here. And it is going to all be able to harvest all at one time. So right now I'm just pulling off the bigger leaves on these ones. And then uh, soon I'll be harvesting from here. But we've basically been able to have a salad like every day or so. So this is for me uh, tonight. I'm the only one that's going to eat a salad. And then I planted some sunflower seeds right along the edge right here, pretty close together because um, I'm hoping it'll provide some shade at certain points of the day, but also I want to use them as cut flowers. And then we have some cucumbers, which are already starting to get, I'm actually going to pull that off so it can put its energy um, into growing, but we have some cucumbers and then I have a loofah plant over here, I'll show you. But I have this rose bush that I, it's finally perking back up. So we have a rose bush here, some geranium. And then I planted some marigold seeds right here. And then some zinnias right here on the corner. Here's that loofah. I planted more of them, but only one survived. And then this is a cucumber, but it's broken. So we shall see. And then on this side of the arch, I have okra. We did have onions here but we transplanted the onions and that was not good for them. We actually planted them and then the ground was too hard where we planted them at. And then we pulled them up and we put them right here and they all started going to seed. And when that starts happening, the bulbs aren't gonna get very big. So we decided to pull them all up and I just made green onions out of them and put them in the freezer. Now we have okra here. And so two different varieties. I think I have like a burgundy and then the Clemson variety, the spineless. So we have four rows of okra. And then over here, just in this spot right here, I put some chamomile seeds that I um, had in the refrigerator for a couple days to kind of put it through a light freeze and then put it out here. That's packet said to do. So we will see if I get any chamomile popping up right here. And then over here is our paste tomatoes. So this is all Roma or the Incardi that I planted. I started all of these indoors, but we did lose three of them right here. So I'll be replacing those. I have some more that are growing inside. When they're big enough, I will um, put them right here. I'm gonna come over here and grab some of this lettuce that I didn't get. So this is the this is the ones I started inside. So they have been growing and they I just take the outer leaves that are getting bigger and that's what I harvest from. And I've been doing this very often, so it's growing quite a bit. And I'm going to grab some kale from the, well I'll grab this one. The kale is beautiful. Need my basket too cuz we're going to look at the strawberries. Okay, quickly, because don't have a lot of battery life, we have 200, about 200 celery plants, three full rows, and then over here, this small row. I think I'm going to have to just purchase some pepper plants because these got stunted. I didn't have the right heat indoors when I was growing them, and then when I brought them out here, we noticed... They already had some aphids on them. So while I don't see any more signs of aphids, we've had lots of ladybugs. I do think these have are stunted quite a bit, but I'm gonna grab some other varieties from the store. Here is our volunteer, either zucchini or squash, but look how big this is. Like this is my hand. 
<laughs> this is the leaf. I actually had to prune it up a little bit. We'll put a clip of that in here because it is covering my carrots. So, but we have quite a bit of carrots on this row right here. And then, so we have quite a bit of carrots that are doing pretty good. Some a little bit smaller. Um, I did a terrible job at weeding this area, as you can see, and then thinning it out. But we're still going to get quite a bit of carrots from this section. I All right, go pick some strawberries for me. So I did the cornstarch piping method. One, I think I had way too many seeds for the amount of cornstarch that like paste that I made because I actually didn't have a seed count. They were all just like in a gallon baggie. So I think the ratio was off and it just did not go smoothly at all. So my carrots were not lined up very well. I still had to do a ton of thinning. It was awful, but I am gonna plant some more carrots uh, in the fall. I think that's when I'm gonna get most of my carrots. But let me turn you back around. Quickly, this is just a row of peas, like half a row of peas. And I've never grown peas before, so we shall see. And then we just have rows and rows of potatoes right now. Okay, I'll help you pick strawberries. So with the potatoes, first three rows were planted, then we waited two weeks between the next set and then two weeks after that. So we won't be harvesting potatoes all at the same time. Let's find some straw. Here's one. It's like shaped like a heart. Here you go. And we have been harvesting strawberries like crazy. And they're actually pretty decent sized strawberries. Now we are losing some because I have no preventative methods for bugs and things like that. You can see they're just directly on the ground. So we do lose some because of that. And I might do a video on some tips and tricks I've learned from growing strawberries. We've been growing strawberries for two years now and this is our best year. And I can definitely say the things that I did last year, I can definitely say the things that I did last year seem to be the trick on getting a very, very large amount of strawberries from your strawberry patch. I'm also gonna be doing bed turnover, meaning I'm going to be planting, okay. I'm gonna be planting another bed of strawberries this year and that strawberry bed will not, I won't let it produce strawberries for two years, but I'll make a separate video about strawberries. Okay. And the kids, we don't let them, this one was eaten. So we gotta give that one to the chickens. We don't let the kids like stick their hands in here cause there could be like a snake or things like that. So they know to let us pick, which I picked that one too early, but that's okay. Here you go. I can't talk and pick strawberries at the same time. And it is seriously like a jungle throughout here. But there's still so many strawberries left. Here's one. This side seems to get the dirtiest. Like that has very sandy soil. Okay, I think that's all of them for today. Here you go. We also have some blackberries starting to pop up. These are our first year to have these. And we actually are thinking about planting them in the ground instead of these large pots. All right, let's go show them the watermelons. Let me walk this way though. This needs to be weeded out. This will be another strawberry bed. There's nothing in here right now except for one little strawberry plant. But here's a little uh, hint on what I did. My first, she said, come on. My first, last year, we did not get any strawberries from there. And I pulled all the flowers off every time I saw one and really let this thing get established. But look at all these new, this is a new runner right here. All these are new runners for this year. And I really wanna figure out a way to like maybe take them and put them elsewhere because they don't have very much more room in here. Found another strawberry. But this will be another strawberry patch. Here's another blackberry, but it, I had to cut it down, but there's still a few blackberries on it. Here's our asparagus, our tiny little asparagus. 
it'll be a while before we get to harvest any of that. We have a new one popping up. So here's what, here's what they would look like when you harvest them. But when they're a lot older, so this is a second year plant, these stalks will be a lot thicker, but you would harvest it here. But if you let it go, it does this right here. And then it'll go to seed and then it'll grow more. So we won't harvest this for a couple years. We have a few more carrots um, here. They're also very sporadic. Same thing, cornstarch method. Won't do that again, or I might figure out the ratio of it. Here's some more potatoes. We have one more row of potatoes to plant, which okay. they'll go right here. Not okay, hold on. And then I have a couple basil plants out, but I need to put more out. These are five rows of corn, which they are starting to pop up. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. Corn is popping up. Uh, what you want to tell them about the watermelon? Yeah. Look what I found. <clears throat> found another one. Let me tell them about these tomatoes real quick. These are our bigger tomatoes. So our paste are up here. And then these are all of our like homestead, Arkansas traveler, beef steak, things like that. Okay, hold on. And then we planted some seeds out. We're gonna see how that goes because we've never planted from seed outside. We've always started them indoors. This has nothing in it except for weeds. <clears throat> We're almost to the watermelon, Chandler, and I'll let you tell them all about it, okay? Garlic was planted in November. There's about 150 of them. Planted these in November and they've just taken off. Nothing is planted here yet or in between where you see that darker section and right here. We have summer squash right here, probably about 20 plants. Zucchini, cucumber, and spaghetti squash, which just yesterday there wasn't any seeds popping up, but I see them today. So we finally have spaghetti squash and we definitely have cucumber, zucchini, and summer squash. So I'm planning on selling a lot of this because we do not need this much, but they are popping up. All right, come. Chandler wants to tell you guys about the watermelon. She was most excited about it. You want to gotta hold it out like this. Sorry. All right, now go tell them about your watermelon over here. Come on. This morning she told me she loves watermelon. She loves planting it, picking it, and buying it. Isn't that right? Okay, we're going to turn it around so you can show them. Show them right here. Take two days. We did plant a watermelon. And we did it. Yeah? Yeah. How many rows of watermelon? It is a nine, ten. And it is a lot of watermelon. And it is a lot of watermelon. And we put them daughter Go turn it this way so they can see. We did three rows of watermelon. And then we will do a row of cantaloupe some pumpkins and I'm just gonna fill that space with a bunch of stuff because I plan on having a bunch available for family and friends and to sell some so we got a little harvest today but we will be harvesting so much in the months to come now on to our chicken problem we do have a chicken problem we have too many chickens and not enough space so this area needs to be cleaned out pretty heavily because since we put the ducks in here I'm sure if you have ducks, you understand. So, so the next stretch of time that we have, we are completely cleaning this out and we really need to give it a break, but we do not have anywhere to put the chickens. We have meat chickens showing up in about a week and a half and they were supposed to go in here, but we moved our older laying hens into that coop. We put our newer ones in here with the ducks. They are not laying yet, but we actually need to build another one of these, maybe possibly two more of them. They have been the best thing we've ever had on the homestead. 
Let me show you. I did a video on this. So there is a video up, kind of just a time lapse of us building it, but they are mostly grass fed. So they are mostly grass fed, but grass fed, but we noticed their egg production went down. So we did put the feed back in there. They still have an organic feed, but we were noticing a huge drop in our egg production. So I've already picked up three eggs today and we got four more. So we've only got seven today, nine eggs today. So this is the inside of the coop. It has a shaded area, um, but we need more because we have 25 more chickens showing up in about less than two weeks. So if you get eggs from us, they are grass fed with some organic feed. I tried to do no feed for the summer and spring, but we need to figure out a better protein source for them. She's coming over here without shoes on. I guess I'm just gonna have to put these in here and clean everything. Okay, let's get these real quick. So we do move this every day, except for when my husband's not home, which he's not home today, but we've been moving them so you can, they get fresh grass. But you can see they've already walked on this grass a lot and picked it up. They do have some lettuce hold on and i need to get them some more water hold on let me dump this out so i can get them some new water but we have 19 chickens in here actually 18. hold on baby girl we have 18 in here one was injured so she's over there with the younger chickens Can you get me a flower? <gasps> thank you. Oh, thank you so much. But um, the goats are kind of not really doing much right now. We have one who will be kidding in about a month, maybe less. But we only have one baby left. We sold the bucks. So we have one doling left. And we were able to keep her because we got a new buck. So she'll be able to breed when she's old enough. So let me just show you. Some of our goats are down at my brother-in-law's house. He has a fenced in area that grows up pretty tall. So every once in a while we put a few goats down there so they have some fresh grass. And then here eventually we're gonna be fencing in this whole back section for the goats to have somewhere to go. But let me show you. So Francis and Sophia will not be having any babies ever. Actually are here. We're like goat sitting them. We love them so much, but they're just a little too old to be having any babies. We just love them. And then Heather here, she had her first uh, kidding um, at the end of the year. I'm gonna eat my finger. This is her dol doling right here. And we, her buck was sold about a month ago, or a little less than a month ago. And I still haven't named her. She is gonna be staying here. We were, we were gonna sell her, but, oh, she's so pretty. I love her mama's color and she looks identical to her mama. This is her dad. This is Chip. He was our very first baby goat. Heather, what, we got her as well, but she was older. We didn't raise her from a baby. And then this is our new buck. This is Coconut. He's a little bit younger than Chip here, but he's definitely at breeding age. So in the fall, we have a few goats that are gonna be breeding. And these are the two bucks that we'll use. But they are in here by themselves. I'll just tell you why they are in here by themselves. They are on this side. It is uh, like fenced off in the middle. We actually wanted our bucks to be down at my brother-in-law's house because they don't need as much attention, but they can jump the fence and they try very hard to get back here to the, to the ladies. So until we can figure out how to heighten that fence so they can't jump over, uh, they stay down here and we just rotate the girls between the two fences. But nobody is with the bucks because I don't need any more babies right now. So that's the end of the homestead tour. That's really, that's all that's going on. The garden is finally uh, booming. It, I say that and then in a month when I do a video, it's gonna be like a jungle in there. But I'm really excited and I'm gonna go in and cook some dinner. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see.